Hello Akuma fans, this is Charlie with the Gossiker application staff once again. Here's a follow-up video of a previously made one where I showed you how to import a tool holder into the OSPP 300 control in order to utilize it for collision avoidance. Today we're going to be importing an STL STP file from Sandvik for a tool that has an insert and is its own holder as you can see with this boring bar that we have. I've imported the STP directly from uh, Sandvik.com and I've made sure that my orientation is correct on the machine making sure that the X positive and the Z positive are in the proper direction and now I will file and save as just as we did in the previous video, we'll save this as an STL file. We'll make sure that we're in metric, even though it will be converted by the machine, we have to start in metric. And I'll make sure that my options are set to course. If your software has the ability to do this, it'll put you way ahead of the game. We want to make sure that we have as many triangles as possible, or I'm sorry, as few triangles as possible to make the file as small as we can get it. So once I've saved that, I can now move my CAD CAM software out of the way. I've put the STL on a USB drive and now I'm ready to insert it into the machine. So the first place to import the solid file is into Easy Modeling. For the P300 guys you'll find the vertical action keys on the right side of the screen. For the P200 guys hopefully you already know how to find your Easy Modeling. I don't have a simulator with the P200 in front of me so I can't show you that but for the P300 guys, it's on the right hand side, the vertical action keys, find the OSP key, and then select Easy Modeling. Since we're bringing in a tool, that's the category we want to select on the left hand side, is that this is a tool. Now, we're going to find the Read button. We'll select the Read File and the USB input where we've plugged in. We're going to make sure we change our file type here from the Akuma equipment to STL, otherwise we won't even see our, our tools show up here. Now I'll select my C6 bore and click on execute. It warns me that it may take some time. Funny because it never does. Once I click on OK, in this particular case I'm getting a warning telling me that wow there's a, a little more to this file than they normally like. They like to see 2000 triangles and we have exceeded that a little bit. Not a big deal, it's just a recommendation. So we'll say OK. Tells me no errors have been found. Once I've done this, it now wants to know what kind of tool it is that we've imported. Our particular tool is an inside working tool, a single edge, and it's a forward facing as opposed to a backward facing. Once I say OK, it'll show me a picture of my tool. And on the left side, it has the opportunity to populate all of these values with the dimensions of the tool. Now, these are informational only, but it is good information if somebody doesn't know exactly what type of tool it is that you've selected. In my case, I'm not going to take the time to go back to Sandvik.com and find all of these values for the, the tool itself. I'm simply going to populate it with a bunch of numbers just so that the machine is satisfied with the dimensions. Once I say OK, it will ask me, do you want to change the tool shape? Absolutely not. Do not change. If you click on tip only or tool shape, it's going to deform your STL based on the numbers you put in. So you want to definitely select do not change. Now we have a picture of our graphic. We have not selected an insert yet so we have the OK is grayed out. This is a stumbling block for a lot of people. They think they're done here. You're not. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my transparency because in a second we're going to move the datum of this part to the tip of the insert. Some people have already done this in their CAD CAM software but we haven't so we're going to do it inside the machine. And the way to do that is to arrow over one time and you find your change orient block. Now this is why I turned on my transparency because that is where it's going to want to install the insert. Now that's not exactly where our insert belongs. It belongs up here. So I'm going to specify position. This is the easiest way for me to do it. It gives me an X, Y, and Z shift to where that insert is. And I'm taking these numbers directly off of Sandvik for the particular tool that we're dealing with. The X coordinate is minus 1.2. 
Notice it's moving the spot for me. That looks about right. And the Z is minus 11. And now our origin is right at the tip of the insert, right where we want it. So I'll click on the word OK. Now it's moved the tool to that position. And OK, once again, will take me back to the previous screen. I still don't have OK because I have not set a tool, a, an insert in here. So we'll arrow over one time, and I've got a button for Edit Insert. This is important when importing a tool because it needs to know what portion of this assembly is authorized to touch the material and which portion should generate a collision avoidance alarm. So once I hit Edit Insert, it gives me the opportunity to create a bizarre insert just from Z's and X's, but that's a little over the top for what I need to do. So I'm simply going to click on the word Template Edit, and now it has a pull-down menu for all of the different types of inserts that it knows how to make. In our case, this tool is in fact a diamond. It's about 196 in uh, thickness. The nose radius of ours, we'll call it a 32. The inscribed circle for this, a CNMG, half an inch. Now, even though we imported it in metric, because our machine is in inch, it's already converted it for us. So don't think you have to convert this insert to metric as well. Nose angle of the insert, as you see here, is the included angle. It's an 80 degree. And our set angle is what angle from zero, from the Z point, is the center line of this tool. And in our case, it's going to be 45 degrees. And it gives me a preview, once I click on OK, of what this insert's going to look like. And that looks exactly right. 5 degree lead, 5 degree drag, and an 80 degree diamond. So once I click on OK, now it has superimposed the insert on top of my tool. And, as you can see, I have the OK button. Before I click on this, I'm going to rotate the tool because I want to warn you about something here. I'll move it around and now zoom in just a touch. And you'll notice that the insert does not quite look like it's seated. That's because Akuma does not build in an automatic negative uh, seat angle like the tool has. Not to worry, it's just a little funky in the graphic. It just looks a little strange. But this area now is understood that it can contact the material without any problem at all, without generating a, um, an alarm of any sort. Once I've done this, I'll click on the word OK. I have the opportunity to provide a name for this, um, for this particular tool. We'll call it a Borbar C6. And now it's in our library, and we'll be able to store this for all eternity. There it is. We can call it up at any time. Now we're ready to install it in the machine. Now we can close out our easy modeling. <clears throat> and we're on to our tool data creation. That's under the tool data tab. And now we will register a tool. Make sure you use tool register because this particular tool is not a turret tool and it's not a multi-chip tool. That's for a holder that's got multiple turning tools within it. So we'll just do a standard tool register and create a tool number that's unique. Once you've registered a tool number, that number is taken for that tool. You can't reuse it. Put in a comment if you like. We'll select the kind of tool it is. It's a turning tool. In this case, we want to slow down the tool changer, so we're going to say it's a weighted tool. And our basic position, how are you going to gauge that tool? Now we'll go into Holder Tool Select. Because we don't have a holder for this tool, we're just simply going to select the tool, pick the one we just created, and say, OK, now it's in. This is where I lose a lot of people. If we terminate what we're doing right now, OK, and register, we have not compensated for the fact that we moved the datum of that tool. So if I try to attach that tool to my turret in graphics, now I'll turn on my collision avoidance and you notice that the boring bar is buried inside the uh, spindle and it's offset. And this kind of throws people for a loop because if you are still in default transparency mode, which means everything is set to zero, you will not see your tool. It'll drive you nuts. You know you installed it. It's showing in your tool data as being in the turret, 
but it simply does not exist in your collision avoidance software. If that's the case, you can click over to monitor and look for your transparency button and take your machine to about 50%. Ah, there it is. It's hiding inside the uh, spindle. So if this happens to you, make sure you just detach the tool. We'll get back into our tool data tab and we're going to edit the boring bar. And under that holder tool select category, we have a button for change settings. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip it over because that's the way we're using it. And now we can, in our tip distance and projection amount, take back out that X and Z value that you used in your graphics to orient the insert right. So our tip distance is going to be minus 1.2 because we're in reverse and 11 inches positive in the projection amount. So now when we put that in and register it, we're going to install it into our turret, the single turret attach. And when we come into collision avoidance, whoa, there's our tool, but I did it wrong. <laughs> it's not the first time and it won't be the last. So I'll get back into my tool data. Once again, detach the tool. And in the tool data tab, we're going to edit that tool and we'll change the holder tool select and change settings to be positive 1.2 because I slipped my uh, finger on the first one. And now when we put it back in the spindle, turret attach, everybody's happy. Hope this helps you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your local Gossiker application staff and have a great day.